Is it just me or does he look super mad right now with his smirk on his face? Isn't she looking super cute with her smirk on her face? She hates it when I shove the camera in her face. Anyway guys, what's good, what's happening, and what's going on? Welcome to yet another one of these vlogs of mine. Where'd the cat go? Scampers? And she gone. Go downstairs. Like, why are you just standing there? You make a better door than a walkway, bud. Frig sakes, man. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I'm honestly starting to be concerned that his hacking is because of how damn dry it is in this house. Probably do with a humidifier to break the dryness. Like you pet the cat and you electrocute her like all the time. Like he could probably even get around it if he'd ever drink some freaking water. Seriously, come here. Come here. Drink water. No, that's food. Drink water. The other bull dum dum. Hey, drink water. Drink. No, drink. 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 Drink it. No, dude. Whatever. I give up. He's stubborn as frig. Anyway, guys, it's uh, Tuesday, second day on the job, and uh, that's where my phone went. I've been looking all over upstairs for it. I thought I lost you. But then I finally found you. I found your cell phone. You're hiding downstairs. And what the frig is that icon about? Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. All right. But yeah, uh, today, like I said, it's on my lunch. A little walk and talk. I don't know. Frig, I don't know. Heard people like these. So, like, we can do these. These are fun. These are exciting. No, they're not. They're actually kind of boring. But seriously, dude, get a drink of water. Go drink water. Go have a drink. Like he's the most stubborn furball that ever walked the earth. So stubborn. So it's actually warmed up a lot out there right now. It's like zero degrees Celsius. I'm hoping for the next two days, 48 hours of this awesome weather, that the ice breaks underneath in the pipe and that pipe can flow again. But then it's gonna drop down again. Like it's supposed to drop and the next week it's gonna be all nice again. I, like I don't understand what's going on with this bipolar weather, but like mother nature needs to figure it out because this is driving me crazy, like insanely crazy. So yeah. Also guys, being Tuesday, usually between now and Thursday, I like to fill up a garbage bag with trash and get it out the door. And I was thinking about potentially coming in here and working this room over. Because there's a lot of stuff. And like I got my Nintendo Wii over there, but that's going to be going. And all this stuff down here is going to be going too. Because I don't have, I don't play video games on consoles anymore. Um, I'm scared to look what's behind that chair. There's a laptop bag over there. There's a TP-Link switch right there. I don't know if you can see that, that blue box. All these movies, I can probably sell them on something. I don't know. Facebook Marketplace, three bucks a DVD, just get rid of them. Um, there's not really much to throw out in here except for a stupid couch, which is covered in cat piss and God knows what else. But it would be nice to straighten this out and get that solved. Uh, something else I wanted to cover was, I was talking about the tap in my, in my bathroom here and people were saying to unscrew this and I can probably clear the screen. The problem is, is this thing here doesn't unscrew as far as I can tell. Or maybe it does. Oh shit, it does. Well, let's see. It's got this thing in it. Okay, let's get you guys in trippy potty mode. All right, you're in trippy potty mode. Let's see if we can push all this crap out. Yeah, because with nothing there, okay. With, with nothing on it, tons of water pressure. Tons of water pressure. With that screen on it, she flows like a potato soup. So, how exactly do I disassemble you? I need tools, or a knife, or this might work, because it's got a flat edge on it, just to pop that O-ring out. All right, pop that O-ring out. Oh yeah, there's definitely crap in there. I wonder if we can... Reverse clear it? <laughs> I don't know. Um, does that separate? No. I could grab my sonic cleaner and blast it. I 
can't remember. I think it was WBM. Who made the suggestion to do this. And this thing's just jam-packed with shit. So I need a pin or a needle or something small. Maybe this pen might work. The way it works is, and it's hard to show on the GoPro, there's little slits in the side here and they look like they're packed with crap. And I need to push that crap out. So obviously some pollutants or something got into the water stream and plugged it up. So big, big thanks for telling me that you can do that because I'm not a plumber. I don't know what the frig I'm doing. <laughs> a lot of you already know this, but don't need to make it that obvious, I guess. I don't know if you can buy a new one of these things somewhere, but... The sonic cleaner might be able to knock all that shit out. A sewing needle would be just super useful right now. You know what? I have one upstairs. I'll be right back. And I'm back! And we got a sewing needle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna feed it into each one of these little crevices and break up the sand or whatever the heck that black shit is in there and see if I can rinse it out once it's free. And we'll see if this returns performance to the tap because we know there's flow. Problem is when you put a sewing needle down on a flat surface, you can never pick it back up again. Come on, there we go. Don't want to drop it on the floor. I'll never find it. This is fun, eh? On my lunch break, normal people eat. I'm trying to fix my bathroom tap so I can actually, like, wash my hands efficiently. Potentially do dishes in here. a huge amount of that black crap in here. Let's see if we can break it up. Maybe flush it out. Oh, it does come apart. Oh, I just put the needle in there and she popped open. And then it closed again because I was excited. There we go. So, that is basically what was causing all the friggin' slow flow. Let me just scrape out the rest of that crap. Then we'll reassemble the sink. Give her a performance test. I love learning from you guys. You guys teach me all sorts of neat stuff. Because let me tell you. Back in the day, it'd be like, Dad, can you take a look at my tap? It doesn't work right. Chances are it would have cost me like a hundred bucks because I would have had to buy a new tap. I didn't think it was serviceable. Got all that black sh mud out of there. Now let's put this back together and see if we can actually put it back. Where'd the white top go? There it is. All right, you clip into there like that. And then you're pretty clear. Yeah, you're pretty clear. You drop into there like so. I'm pushing on the plastic guys, not on the screen. So just so you're aware, I know if I push on that screen, I'm gonna go right through it. All right, that's back in there. Now, this goes in there like that, so you put it in like that, so the hole's down. Reinstall your O-ring, so everything is flush and happy and secure. And water can only go in one way. Beard trimmer cleaner as a pry to push the O-ring in. And let's screw that back on. Check it out, guys! 
We have water pressure again. Nice. Nice. Very, very nice. So I'm two for three. Two of the fixes I attempted worked. The fan and this. The drain, however, not so much. Still need more work on that. Well, that's super awesome and exciting, I think. Well, probably not. Like, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. You guys knew what you were doing. You guys told me what to do. And then I fixed it. I think uh, Beast 6226, also Mr. Beast 6226. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure on the username. I'm sorry. Uh, also mentioned uh, how to do that. He used to be the administrator for redneckrickham.com for the uh, the forum where I met a lot of people. Oh, we still got 10 min uh, 20 minutes. Nice. Still got 20 minutes, boys. Still got 20 minutes. That's freaking awesome. So, yeah, Mr. Beast, is, uh, he used to run the Redneck Rickham Forum back in the day. And we used to all go in there and post our videos and chat with other aspiring creators and have a good freaking time. It was a good place where you can like bring up ideas for projects and a lot of people who are into redneck engineering would offer you advice and it was always a good time. Always a good time. I thought about starting a forum back in the day where people could come and hang out and share videos and stuff too but I was like well if Redneck Reckham's friggin sites like everybody was there so it's like why reinvent the wheel? Didn't make sense so I never got around to it. Figured friggin you know what? For fun, I'm curious, after eating that steak last night, if I can call it a steak after eating that meatloaf, while holding the camera, I'll put you guys down. Let's see what we're at today. Still have the mic on me. The mic adds seven pounds. 254. You know what? I'll take it. Uh, after eating that huge piece of meat last night and my workout, hitting 254, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I'd like to be down to 250 by this weekend, but Nikki's coming up and on Thursday night, we're doing it. I, I might have already talked about this, but Thursday night we're doing taco salad. Uh, she found a kit at Costco for a taco salad that apparently is really good. On Friday night, we're doing steak and Caesars because it's been forever since I had a good Caesar. And she says she makes a wicked Caesar. So I'm, I'm willing to judge. I'll, I'll take it for a run. Mind you, 90% of the Caesars I've had in the past were from Mott's Clamato cans. So there's not really much of a comparison there, right? And then Saturday, we might go to Sills for supper because she really misses that restaurant. And the last two times she came down, we were under lockdown procedures and we couldn't go to restaurants. That's finally lifted as of yesterday. So that's pretty awesome. So we're probably going to hit up Sills on Saturday and then Sunday... Weather permitting, like I said, she's going to have to leave early to get to work. Uh, I'm going to probably pack up and head off to the lake around noon, stay there till 5, and uh, try my luck at some guppies. I might go tomorrow, I might not, I'm not sure. I'll see how I feel uh, after work. You know, going during the week, I don't know. Like I said, ice fishing is not my, my shebang. It's not my favorite. A lot of people love it because you don't need a boat. Grab your sled, get out there on the ice and go and rip. Like if you have... If I had a sled and I had all the gear, yeah, I'd probably love it too. But you know, that, that two kilometer walk out, which takes about an hour or half an hour. Like by the time I get down there, unload my gear and hit the ice, it takes me about 45 minutes to get to the location. So it's 445 and then dangling for like a half an hour. And then by then it's dark. You don't want to be on the ice in the dark because sleds are ripping by. They might not see you. Accidents happen. Way she goes. So I'm thinking, Maybe we'll wait until the weekend and go. And then next weekend, if it's nice, I might go again. But ice fishing is not my prime priority, which is why I didn't invest a dime into it this year. Like last year, I invested a lot of money into it. This year, not so much. Because, well, last year, you guys remember how mad I was getting? Like I was getting upset. Like it was like a long walk out, dangle, not catch a fish or catch one fish. Long walk back. The best part about it though is the steps you get in, the cardio you get in. That's one of the benefits. Like you burn a lot of calories walking that sleigh out and walking that sleigh back. And even sitting in a cold ice hut, you burn a lot of calories because your body will run at a higher caloric burn to create heat to regulate your body temperature. Which is why I tell people when they're fasting or if they're 
trying to lose weight is don't have a super hot room because you want a cooler room. You want that room to be about 60 to 68 degrees so that your body in the night has to fight to maintain warmth and burn calories, more calories than it would normally. So still talking about the fasting over here, eh? But next week I'm gonna do a five day. I'm gonna go from Monday to Friday. We're gonna shut down the feeding supply and just hammer down on some old school snake water, snake juice fasting. My objective, you saw 254. I wanna have that number down to 234 by the end of February, if not further down. I wanna have that number way down. I was looking at some pictures from last year at this time. And it's kind of funny, like last year at this time, I was pretty much the same weight. I was around 250-ish. Same thing happened last year. November hit, December hit, and I, I friggin' Christmas was delicious and I gained a bunch of weight. Actually, last year I was worse. I hit 283 pounds last year. And then this summer with all the biking and that, I got down to 204 pounds. But my objective is, but last year actually when I was eating all that food, I wasn't working out as much. This year I was working out. So all those extra calories were coming in, coming up clutch to help build more muscle. Cause I definitely noticed it in my shoulders. They're a lot bigger. My arms are a lot bigger. I'm curling a lot more weight. I'm now doing laterals with 25 pounds and it feels good. Where last year I could barely do laterals with 15s. So uh, between that and all the compound movements, I'm picking up a lot of, uh, a lot more strength. And from eating all the calories, it was helping. So that's kind of cool. Just had to check the mic to make sure it was recording because you never know with this setup. But uh, something else I'm doing this year, and I mentioned it before, is I am doing the the bike. The bike, uh, I'm gonna pull the hat trick and do it three years in a row. Maybe I'll do another one the following year, I don't know. It's for a good cause, for Sick Kids Hospital, so they can buy cancer equipment to diagnose and and he, and uh, help treat cancer and kids. So I, I think it's a great cause, and I'm probably gonna do that again next year. But I'm definitely doing it this year. And I mentioned it at Clifford's uh, to one of, his, one, of his, one of the people that was there. I'm like every year I'm like I we were in the garage and I'm like that's what I need to do this year is buy a new bike because uh there's no way in hell I can do my charity run on a fat bike three years in a row because that thing's just a bitch to pedal and he's like oh what charity run so I explained the whole situation to him and he literally said he goes okay so this is what I'm gonna do he's like come July 31st however much money you have and I know this guy's got money <laughs> I know this guy's got money uh he's like I'm literally gonna match it I told him I do kilometer for dollar until August 1st. After that, any donations that come in on August 1st, those kilometers don't count. I still did it last year anyway. Like I was at uh, 575 when I started, uh, when August 1st started, but I got up to like 860 bucks and I did 873 kilometers. I still went out and did all the kilometers, but the rule is, is what I hit on August 1st is what the kilometers I'm doing. So he literally said, I'm gonna match it dollar for dollar. Now, Nikki's on board. She's gonna try and get me a bunch of donations from down south. And uh, you can usually get a bunch of donations through work. Like I can usually haggle my way through. I just wait till payday and I harass people. And then I usually get a bunch of donations. Like my goal is 500 bucks because I just want the jersey. And then once I get that, then cool. But if you can raise over 2,500 bucks, you can get the superhero jersey. Last year it was like Captain America. The year before that it was Spider-Man. Who knows what it's gonna be this year? Whichever hero is like the biggest hero, I guess. Anyway, guys, I gotta go check that time and see where I'm sitting because I do not wanna be late from lunch. And that clock says it's 108. I think I have about 10 minutes left. So there we go, guys. We actually did something productive today. We did a little bit more than a walk and talk. We took somebody's advice from the comments and we applied it and we fixed the drain or fixed the sink. So now we got water pressure. So that's awesome. Anyway, guys, I got to get back in there. So I'm going to shut this vlog down here and we'll carry on after work with a whole new video. If you're wondering what I'm doing, I don't know if I'm going to be videoing Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So I'm just trying to get some videos ahead. So there's a video every day and that way there I don't miss miss a day so hopefully you enjoyed this video if you did click that like button any questions comments concerns down below they go and until next time guys live it to win it and peace the frig out Sit, stupid, sit. Good dog.